whosoever shall be a freeman of Preston shall be a freeman of all England. Thus reads the charter granted to the burgesses of Preston by King Henry II in the year of our Lord, 1179. Nearly 800 years later, in the year 1972, the 27th recorded guild mayor dons his regalia for the reading of the first of the three proclamations which are read prior to the opening of the guild court. Since Tudor times, the court has been convened every 20 years, a sequence broken only by the intervention of two world wars. For this historic occasion, Prestonians have gathered from all parts of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow citizens, I invite you to accord three hearty cheers for the Guild Mayor and Mayoress. Is it? Preston Guild, 1972. The mayor of this borough of Preston hereby giveth open knowledge, monition, and warning to all and every the free burgesses of this borough, as well inhabitants as foreigners, that they and every of them do make their repair by themselves or their friends as proxies to this town upon Monday, the fourth day of September next coming, being the Monday next after the feast of the decollation of St. John the Baptist, at which feast the guild merchants within this town have heretofore... Loyalty to their king and country earned for the Burgesses of Preston their original charter, which granted them the right to trade freely, completely exonerated from the payment of all fees, fines, tolls, and allied payments, a right which extended to all trades, crafts, and professions, and admission to the guild became an hereditary right to be passed from father to son down the centuries. Today, modern Prestonians are as proud of this right as were their medieval ancestors. Though little of the old town can be seen today, the people are proud of the historic richness of their heritage, and in the museums and art galleries, the national importance of the town can be traced back to earliest times. Most interesting of all, perhaps, for the average person, are the old guild charter books, which are on permanent public display. But Preston has always been a modern town, a trend-setting leader of its times, and never has this been more true than today, so totally geared as it is to 20th century requirements. For Preston is on the brink of massive expansion. The excellence of its communications by road, rail, sea and air, availability of a skilled labor force, and highly competitive living and trading costs are rapidly marking it as one of the most desirable of the new development areas. The town's growth potential is enormous, and drastic redevelopment is already well underway. Today, Preston is a town of pleasing architectural contrasts, but along with the new has been the careful preservation of the old. Buildings, such as the Harris Museum, for example. Nearby, and in strong contrast, stands Preston's impressive new Guild Hall. The old market has always been a feature of Prestonian life, and its popularity extends far beyond the town's boundaries. For thrifty shoppers, there are many bargains to be found, and the popularity of the market has made expansion inevitable. 
Today, adjacent to the old market, stands its modern new extension, which is rapidly proving one of the most used shopping areas in the town. Almost within a stone's throw of the market stands Fishergate, one of the town's most ancient thoroughfares, which dates back to pre-medieval times. Here are the principal shops and hotels of Preston. On the site of the Bull and Royal, an inn has stood since the 1300s, though the present hotel dates back only to the 17th century, when it was amalgamated with a hostelry that stood opposite, and the two formed to make a coaching house. For almost 300 years, this hotel has enjoyed a reputation for serving the best of traditional British food, a reputation which is as true of today as it has ever been. Though now owned by one of the country's leading hotel groups, the Bull and Royal has lost nothing of its individuality, and many discerning Prestonians regard it as the town's premier hotel. Included in the redevelopment of the town are plans for a new hotel, being built by the Crest Group, who own the Bull and Royal. The new hotel will be sited within the new bus station complex, a central situation which will render it easily accessible. A scale model gives some indication of the exciting Space Age design. Regardless of the amenities which will be offered by the new building, there's still a great deal of comfort to be found in the town's existing hotels. The care and planning that has gone into designing the new Preston may be clearly seen in the new architecture. This multi-story car park, for example, is one of the most up-to-date in the country. Development of this complex is still continuing. There's much yet to be done. Even so, the site is already viable and in daily use. There are many internationally known industrial names associated with the Preston area, one in particular being a common site here. For situated at nearby Leyland is one of the world's most renowned omnibus manufacturing plants. Preston is rightly proud of the excellence of its comprehensive bus service. This has to be good for the town's geographically central situation makes it an ideal link for all other parts of the country, rendering it imperative that first class and frequent public transport should be available. An award-winning product demands top class operatives and amenities for its production. Both are to be found in Preston, which is why the British Leyland factory was sited here. A red shell, as though drawn out of glowing furnaces with flames unquenchable that fire them from within, thus making them burn, as thou seest in this, the nether hell. Evocative words for the dramatic underworld setting of the foundry, where molten metal is poured to cast the cylinder engine blocks. A difficult and highly skilled task. After the cylinder blocks have been rough cast, they must then pass through a machine which processes them into a final finish. On this enormous shop floor, the detailed work of assembling the buses starts in earnest. First, of course, comes the assembly of the various components. When this process has been completed, the engines are ready for their final fitting.
after many rigorous checks, the engines are now ready for final testing in the test bay. These powerful engines are destined to drive vehicles which will carry passengers all over the world. On the commercial vehicle assembly line, skilled engineers start assembling the new vehicles. Now they start to assume a recognizable form and are capable of being driven off at the end of this process. The destination of these vehicles is unknown, but each one will carry with it something of the Prestonian pride wherever it may go. With mounting excitement, the townsfolk once again gather in the market square to hear the reading of the second proclamation, in order that all should be aware that the court will open on the first Monday following the decollation of St. John the Baptist, the traditional date reserved for the commencement of Preston Guild Merchant. The mayor of this borough of Preston hereby giveth open knowledge, monition, and warning to all and every the free burgesses of this borough, as well inhabitants as foreigners. Scrolls of friendship flown into Manchester Airport from all over the world have been brought to Preston by a team of runners who now receive civic thanks. Preparations for the Guild may now be seen on all sides, and the streets take on a gay, festive air. The offices of any newspaper are always a hive of activity, but with the advent of the Guild, Preston's Lancashire Evening Post has had its normal workload doubled. A special Guild supplement is to be printed, and editorial executives have the onerous task of ensuring that this historic issue equals in importance the great occasion it commemorates. In this field also, Preston leads, for the Evening Post stands high on the list of major provincial papers and has an editor and editorial staff who rank amongst the country's foremost journalists. This lively combination of creative talents has been a major contribution to the paper's rapidly increasing circulation. First-class coverage of local and national events keeps Prestonians well abreast of current affairs, and extensive use of modern printing techniques ensures that production always meets the demand. As the Guild celebrations draw nearer, visitors start to arrive in the town, many from overseas. For there are today many Prestonians living abroad, but the ties with their own town bring them home for the all-important guild. For these officials, it was a doubly important occasion, for it was decided to take this opportunity of also holding a formal press day. Within the environs of Preston are many internationally known companies who are involved with the guild. This is one of many. The products which leave this company's assembly lines are virtually household names, their leisure products being particularly popular. Cabinets take shape with remarkable speed when skilled, agile fingers get to work. When these famous towel cabinets have been fully tested and packed, they are then dispatched to all parts of the world. To cope with the growing demands of the leisure industry, more and more new lines are being added to the company's range.
like many other companies in the Preston area, this group is adding considerably to the country's exports. But as the guild approaches, the accent veers slightly away from work and Prestonians start their own guild celebrations as each craft, trade and profession gather together to commemorate the occasion in their own way. For the president of the pharmaceutical guild, this is a proud and happy moment, particularly when he has such an attractive audience. And so the moment for which everyone has been waiting arrives, and the guild court is opened. The long process of calling the freemen of the borough begins, asking them to present themselves in order that the roll shall be kept up to date. In many cases, this honor has been passed from father to son down through the centuries. At the end of the first call comes the start of the many splendid processions which will parade through the gaily decorated streets. But first, there must be a thanksgiving service, for there's a strong religious influence throughout the guild celebrations. But Preston's on holiday, and the excitement of the happy crowds put an added burden on the town's police force. So the rich and magnificent procession starts to form. But even the normal solemnity of such an occasion has an indefinably festive air. Amongst the civic dignitaries are representatives from all religious denominations. Differences born of class, creed or color find little encouragement for growth in Preston. All Preston has been preparing for this great occasion for months past, with many traditional skills being employed as a reminder of the town's proud reputation for fine craftsmanship. Here, a silver heirloom of tomorrow is being hand engraved with the guild emblem, and when completed, it stands as a work of art in its own right. But in the same plant, the bread and butter chores must still go on. Though less romantic, the vital work of putting protective coatings on metal has still to be carried out, for without such protection, corrosion would soon render these essential components useless. In general, items leaving this plant are certainly not picturesque, 
but they are essential. But once every Preston Guild, articles of rare and lasting beauty are to be seen here amongst the utilitarian. The hustle and bustle of preparing for the Guild extends over every conceivable type of factory and business. Some, on the face of it, having little bearing on the celebrations. Yet locally produced articles are extensively used for the preparations. Here, for example, the remarkably tough and resilient mica board is manufactured for use in electrical insulation. The important properties of these sheets are their strength and high degree of insulation, which of course make them ideal for electrical purposes. It is in fact the electrical properties of this material which make it so sought after. The government stamp of approval vouches for the high quality of the material dispatched from this factory. For the printers in Preston, the guild poses special problems, for there's an additional heavy workload. At Mather's Printing Works, extensive use of the most modern and up-to-date printing equipment allows all requirements and deadlines to be met. Color printing brings its own problems, even with modern lithograph machines. Careful checks are vital if the finished product is to be up to standard, a point considered so important that even the managing director makes spot checks. Special issues of Guild bus timetables must be printed in time. Once printed and stapled, all print has to be carefully checked before it can pass on to the packing and dispatch department, but eventually all are ready on schedule. Householders too are putting pressure on local manufacturers, paint being particularly in demand. The Lowland Paint Factory contributing to the Guild effort by producing new and delightful shades in addition to their already comprehensive range. Once filled, the cans of paint soon find their way into local retail and wholesale outlets, for Prestonians are preparing to paint the town not only red, but every other conceivable shade also. This is a time when civic pride is reflected on all sides, and in every walk of life, even domestically. Prestonian homes will sparkle with fresh paint and paper for their guild. Timber is another commodity also in great demand at this time, and at Bamber Bridge, the local branch of a large national timber group are working to capacity to meet the heavy demand on their resources. However, it's not just ordinary timber requirements with which this firm deals. Here are also manufactured the skeletal wooden frames for a fascinating new range of houses, their construction being based upon prefabrication lines. But at this time, the main demand on the firm is for constructional timber, all of which has to be planed and custom cut, ready for use. All day long, heavily laden lorries are leaving these timber yards, many deliveries being destined for use in the guild. One example of the use to which the timber is put may be seen at this saddlery at nearby Kirkham. Here, equipment for stables and gymkhanas are made for dispatch all over the country though currently it is guild equipment which predominates. Preparations are now almost complete. Only the finishing touches remain to be slotted into the well-planned pattern. Musical arrangements can now be put into operation, and in neighboring Blackpool, a local musical instrument dealer makes his own personal contribution to the guild effort by loaning one of the superb electronic organs from his shop. Once loaded, the organ then starts out on its journey to the giant Preston Guild Industries exhibition.
traffic in the town builds up as visitors from all parts of the world flock to this remarkable exhibition, drawing accolades from all who visit it. Praise which is well deserved, for in spite of the enormity of the task, the entire exhibition was constructed in only 10 days, an incredible feat of planning and technical skill. The main marquee houses a fascinating range of exhibitions and ancillary services. Boredom here is an impossibility, no matter how young you are. There's literally something of interest for everyone. Possibly one of the most rewarding aspects, however, to Prestonians of the exhibition is the participation of so many locally based companies whose names and products are of international importance. But manufacturers and traders from other parts of the country have felt proud of being invited to participate in this very special exhibition, and Preston has been pleased to welcome them. Nationalized industries have also been pleased to be represented at this historic show. For the ladies, there is much to see and admire. A housewife's dream, in fact. youngsters a chance to see what it feels like to be behind the wheel of a real racing car even if the angle is a bit unusual appropriate to its jet set image this company sponsors its own racing team there's always the chance of a free sample. Yes, boys, it was free anyway. The consensus of opinion seems to be that such delicious produce is worth buying. Another check cashed? Well, one can always cool off with one of the refreshing Caribbean fruit drinks. That's if this customer hasn't ordered them all. Here, some of the latest men's fashions may be seen. And for the photographic enthusiast, helpful advice from a top-flight professional. A major feature on the site is one of the prefabricated homes made in Preston, a most popular exhibit. The superbly made double glazing and allied glassware being the contribution of a Scottish firm. 